Matthew 22, 23. And if you have ever watched wrestling in your life, quit now. But they had the thing, you know, they had the, the, you know, the teams of wrestlers. And, you know, he goes to his corner. He puts his hand up, taps, taps the other guy in the hand. And he goes over the ropes. And the new guy comes in. And, being, and that's what's going on right here. They're tag team in Jesus. They've been we taxes. Levy. Oh man, he put us to shame. Next, tag team Sadducees. The same day came to him the Sadducees. Sad you see. Okay, so here they go. This is another religious sect. Which say there is no resurrection. You got that? That's almost like the Pope saying now that uh, sodomites is not illegal. Uh, that's because he's protecting his own people. Well, when we look at what the Bible says, never mind what man says, and I get where I'm supposed to be. Oh, go to Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 23. And it's repeat. It's a verily, verily, verse 8. When the Bible repeats something, it's important. Do you know the birth of Jesus Christ is not repeated? You know the, 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 the Magi that came to Jesus is not repeated? You know, when the, when the angel speaks to the shepherds, peace on earth, and that's not repeated? This is repeated. And I, I'm reading the book. Of, I just finished the book of Numbers today. There's those, those what, four or five sisters. I can't think of their names now. You know how many times you read about those sisters? Ever since they go up to Moses and say, our father, you know, he, he died regular. He died in the wilderness. He wasn't with these sinners and all that. Why should we not have any land? Because our father died, you know, respectfully. And they're mentioned, 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 mentioned at the close of the book of Numbers. For the Sadducees, verse 8, there they are again, that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. All right, so this is a group of people that don't believe in anything. You would call them Democrats, Republicans, uh, scientists, everything, educated Californians. No, I just made the people bad. Now, Matthew 22 The Sadducees who say there is no resurrection. Did you get that? There's no resurrection. Asked him. Okay? They approached Jesus. We don't believe in a resurrection. Same master. That's a rabbi. That shows up over and over in this chapter. Every time they approach Jesus, master, never, never Messiah. Now look. Look how close that master, it's rabbi, look how close that, that master is to Messiah. M-A-M-E. M-A-S-M-E-S. -E they missed it by three letters. You know how short some people are going to end up in hell? Something very, they didn't believe Jesus. That's what gets you in hell today. You did not believe in Jesus. And you'll see, look at Master 22, that, that was the, the Herodians, or Herodians, whatever you say. It's the Sadducee, and then the Pharisees will come up next. Or going tomorrow night, no, Friday night. Master, Moses said, Ooh, now we're going to the law. If a man die, having no children, his, brothers, his brother shall marry his wife. That's in the law. That is to carry the man's name over. And if you have an older brother, you would pray to Jehovah. Oh, please don't marry that woman. No. No. Not her. Because if you die... And you have no children. No. 
How'd you, how would you, how would you like to have that? That would never be in America. But it's to carry over the Jewish name. All right, here we go. And raise up seed. In other words, uh, you would have a child, and that child would be called by your brother. Unto his brother. Okay. Now, here we go. There were there was with us seven brethren. And can you just picture now of uh, seven brethren? Is it real? Is it made up? No, there was. Seven. You ever have somebody come up to you? You know, I'm just asking for a friend. Yeah, right. You know, and you, you have somebody come up to you, and then they're, well, you know, I know somebody, you know, you know, he came home, and he, his wife is mad at him. Oh, what would you think he would do? There are seven brethren. There's one how seven. Seven's complete in the Bible. The first, when he married a wife, deceased, he died. Having no issue, no children. No, the word issue, children. Left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second and the third and unto the seventh. So it, it's, whether this is true or not, it's definitely the woman who, who can't produce the children. Last of all, the woman died also. Poor lady. Therefore in the what? What did the Holy Spirit tell you? Verse 23, And the same day Sadducees came would say that there's no resurrection. What did they say? Therefore in the resurrection, you're a hypocrite. You don't believe in the resurrection. And you get in any public ministry of the gospel, you'll get somebody who will come up to you and they'll ask you questions that they don't even care. And I've been stuck in that. I, I have been in street preaching, and I have a guy come up to me. In the end, I just realized that guy just wasted a whole entire day. We had one time, we were in Norwich. The Salvation Army fought us, believe it or not. The kids would get off the school bus to go into their facility. We'd give out gospel tracts, and I'd preach a little. Well, the Salvation Army tried to stop us. The first, well, not the first time we did it. We got the second or third time we we did it. This big fat lard butt, wearing the Salvation Army uniform with his shirt unbuttoned and chicken or whatever kind of gook on him. He comes up talking to me, starts asking me questions, and blah blah blah. blah. We're talking, we're talking. We're, I'm leaning on the fender of the bus, and we're talking. And then he looks at me and says, Ha ha! I said, What? He says, Every kid got in there and you didn't see, you didn't get nothing to them. That guy purposely, purposely had me to avoid talking to those children. The next week they hired goons to try to keep us away from those kids. You can't get, keep this big mouth away from them. So, therefore, in the resurrection, they don't believe in the resurrection. That guy asked me a bunch of questions. He didn't believe. By the way, I did call the Salvation Army of Hartford, Connecticut. About the, uh, well, you know, we want to keep the school program, and they got all upset about that. Well, I hope you have a nice time in hell with all the people you're protecting. I hope they kick your butt for all eternity in hell. But it's not nice to say. We said that was nice. I'm just doing what Jesus did. I didn't have the WW Jesus did because a lot of people wouldn't believe what I do that Jesus did. So, here's a question that we don't believe in. Where did Cain get his way? Got it from his father-in-law. Did Adam and Eve have a belly button? Did Cain, did, did, did uh, Ham come out as a black man? You know? I don't know. I did my, my Genesis commentary. I put, all right, here's this question. We're coming up to Genesis chapter 10. 
hands going to hand him is Africa. It was he the black man. I don't know. I don't know. So Jesus answered, said unto he do err. Right off the bat. Not how do you do? Good afternoon. I nice talk to you. Oh, let me, let's sit down and have an eight point message. What do you think the Bible says? But no, you do err. You're wrong. That's what Jesus would do. I've done that. I've done that in the streets and I've done it in the church house. Sunday school teacher get up there and teach nonsense. And guess who I'm going to talk to you after Sunday school? Me and him. Well, guess who I'm going to talk to? You're wrong. You ain't nice. I told a pastor once, I said, you know what? Your church is just too decorated for, for, sun, for uh, vacation bio. This is ridiculous. I'll see you next week. Don't come back. Wow. Not knowing the scriptures. Well, they don't. They didn't believe in the resurrection. Resurrection is all the Old Testament and New, well, New Testament. Not. So, wait a minute. The life of Jesus, right? You know throughout all Israel, they know about this man Jesus and what he's doing. Even Herod's reporting. He and his disciples have gone out and the dead people have been resurrected. The news would get around. Hey, you know George next door? Yeah. Man, I tell you, he got ran over by all those camels. He did? Yeah, and he died. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. He's right there. Yeah, I know. Jesus came, touched him. Boom, here he is. I bet you the Jews were all the resurrections of the disciples. And I bet you they're glad. Oh, I'm glad we didn't do an autopsy. I'm glad we didn't pull all the insides. <laughs> Imagine uh, uh, Lazarus having all his insides taken out. He's sitting down at the table for for, uh, for Martha and, and Mary. Well, Lazarus, you know what the meatballs you like? I, I can't eat them. I don't have a stomach no more. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that's a sign right there. They did not take the internal parts out of the bodies of Jewish people. The Egyptians did that. All right. You don't know the scriptures. He's talking to a religious group. I posted my Facebook. The idiot, dumb, stupid donkey pole. Oh, you know, homosexuality is, is not a crime. Oh, guess what I went and did on Facebook? And guess my sister, my half sister, is really upset with me. I bash Catholics. Okay, you know. So does Jesus. He's bashing, not the Catholics, the Sadducees. You don't know Scripture. Nor the power of God. <laughs> and he's talking about the resurrection. Because look, for in the resurrection, the power of God, for in the resurrection, the resurrection is the power of God, and the church is going up. If you're dead. If you're alive, you're going up. That's by the power of God. We're in the resurrection. They neither marry. So you will not be with your spouse matrimony together in heaven. For some men like me and, and, and uh, Bob Jones Sr. with you know, two or three wives. Some other Christians, two or three wives, two or three husbands. Christians. You're not going to be married in heaven. Nor given in marriage. So there is no marriages in New Jerusalem. But are as the angels of God in heaven. We will be spirits. We will have, and angels don't have wings. Now, angels from Genesis to Revelation don't have wings. There's innumerable angels, and they're all males. That would shock the women's living movement. There are no female angels. There are no little cute little baby angels. You're probably about 33 years old, 30 years old to about 33 and a half years old. You have all power to fly without the wings. You have mighty power because Jesus says, listen, I can call the Father and call legions of angels. 
The angel of the Lord in the Old Testament wiped out almost an entire army. Two angels destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. That will be us one day. And then there are wicked angels, and we will judge them angels. But, as touching the resurrection. Now look at, look at Jesus. Verse 30. Resurrection. Verse 31. Resurrection. Alright, go back to 23. The Sadducees would say there's no resurrection. Look at Jesus grill it into them. They say there is no resurrection. In the resurrection. In the resurrection. Man, that, that's got to hurt. I, I did that. When I, when I used to preach in the streets before my health went. I used to come up to me. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus. I just bam, 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 bam. Oh, the Pope. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Mary. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What you do, you, know, you turn people. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Bam, bam, salt. I believe in being a salty Christian. Use that knife, cut them, and then put the salt in there. That's not nice. Look what Jesus did. What would Jesus do? He's talking to a group of people who don't believe in the resurrection, in the resurrection, in the resurrection. When you got somebody who doesn't believe the Bible, doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in Jesus, God created everything. Well, you know, God created everything. Well, we come from monkeys. In the beginning, God created well, thousands of millions. God made Noah build that ark. <coughs> Jamming it. Jamming it. Jamming it. Hey, verily, verily, Jesus would say. And he would repeat. He would repeat. He would repeat. That's what you're supposed to do with your scripture. You want to memorize scripture? Say it over. Say it over. I got to say it over here. My new phone number. I don't know my new phone number because I don't say it over and over and over and over like I'm supposed to. I would know when I was in school, and I, to get, uh, when I was in my classes, I had to memorize scripture. I write it, say it, write it, say it, write it, say it. It was on the bathroom mirror. It was on the, the, the little part of the steering wheel of the car. That's what he's doing. We're in the resurrection. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, so you've you got to die to be resurrected. Don't well, you know, I was living, I was under the medical things, and they gave me all kinds of drugs. <laughs> no, you saw drugs in work. Or the devil's lied to you. The angel of light. <laughs> Don't go into it, it might be the devil. Or a big choo-choo train. Have you, have you not read? Whoa. Do you read the scripture? Now, let me ask you something. Let, let, let's take a break here for a moment. Let's take a commercial break. This message is brought to you by Christians. When you stand in the judgment seat of Christ, if Jesus were to say, have you not read, what would your answer be? Uh, read his digest. That's not what you're supposed to read. The TV guy. That's not what you're supposed to read. The newspaper. Have ye not read? That's a pretty that, that's a pretty bold statement by Jesus left alone. Dealing with religious people. They're going to be one day the Pope is going to stand before Jesus at the great white throne judgment. Haven't you read? Well, tradition. <laughs> What's that Bible verse that says you know, it, you defame God and his by your traditions? I don't know. But there is a verse. So when the Pope say, well, traditions, God, Jesus will quote what he said about traditions. Well, you know, my, what I said. Have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God? Uh oh, this Jehovah. That's. But you know, he says, spoken unto you by God, not your God. Unto you by God, not your God. 
That's a big, big buy. Now, for me, I hope it would be, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by your God? Have you not read what God wrote? Yes, Lord, I have. And yes, Lord, you are my God. There'll be some, by God, not your God. And when you read the scriptures, realize who is being spoken to. Does it say your God or my God? That's a big deal. Because in Daniel, <clears throat> you will find, well, you know, let's say your God. Excuse me. Why isn't he your God? The book of Acts, you'll get, well, you, you know, your God. Well, wait a minute. Shouldn't you? Aren't you listening to me? you got to have him to be your God. In heaven. No, I don't know. And I've been spoken to you by God saying. So Jesus is going to quote God. And if I can read the letter here. I believe it is Deuteronomy 25.5. Okay. Go back to verse 24. Moses said, Have you not read the scriptures? Let me tell you what Moses said. <laughs> oh, man. That wound has got to be throbbing now. You know, it, it's, you ever done this? You ever have a blister on your leg or your foot? I forget. I, I, I long for because I have no feeling in my feet. But you ever get that blister and you get in the hot water and you just want to scream all your stomach and lungs and everything out? I mean, you, that blister touches that water, and you are in the cloud screaming. I guarantee you, that's what these Sadducees are right now. I am. Oh, the great I am, Moses. That's Exodus. We're quoting from Deuteronomy, and we're also quoting from Exodus. The God of Abraham. Well, that's that's the father, the foundation of Israel. The God of Isaac, not Ishmael. Sorry, Arabians. Sorry, Ishmael. It's Isaac. In the New Testament, Abraham, Isaac. Sorry, Mohammedans. You are not the chosen people. And the God of Jacob. Oh, okay. Now, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's their God. That's the God. If your God is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you don't have God. Well, you know, Ishmael. No one. Well, I got the God of Allah, Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. No, 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 no. I got the God of Washington. No, 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 no. God of Mary. No, 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 no. Pope. Idiot. No, 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 no. My God is God of Jesus, of Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. And I can take you to the book of Luke, and I can show you all the descendants of Jesus, all the way back to Adam. God is not the God of the dead. Well, Aunt Susie, she, she was, she's a Christian and she's dead and we buried her. Open up, oh, dig out her grave and look, she's dead. No, she's not. But of the living. Abraham had a conversation with a man in hell. Samuel said, I was sleeping. When Jesus crossed that gulf, they all got up. Matter of fact, they came out of the graves. When a Christian dies, now we'll bring it to the church age, which also is, it, the fact is, when a Christian dies, all right, there's his dead body, boom. 
It could be buried. It could be burned on a, on a, on a faggot. It could be drowned. It could be cut up in pieces like the Catholic Church did with a, a Tyndale believe with. Whatever you do with that body, that body could be cremated. Now, I'm not, I know the, the foundation of cremation, but it happens. You may drown at sea. You may, it may be a Christian that was in the Titanic. His body's down there now, decayed, eaten by whatever is down there. Well, that's your body. For all living people, your your spirit, that, that what you're, you're breathing, goes back to God. That belongs to God, the Bible says. Your spirit. The body, whatever happens, buried in the ground, it, it's burnt in ashes, it's, it, it's fed to the, food, the whales, whatever. All right? Your soul goes to heaven or hell, there is no purgatory. A Christian, talking about a Christian, on this side of Calvary, is absent from the body, he's no more in that body, and he's present with the Lord. I have grandparents and a wife that saved. Their bodies are in a grave, and I can show you the grave, but they are with Jesus Christ today. In fact, many Christians I know they have gone on to glory. One day, Jesus is going to be in the, in the sky. The trump is going to be blown. All of our body, wherever it is, wherever the, whatever the maggots are, whatever's happened to it, it's going to come together, and we're all going to meet only to save in the clouds. And we'll all know each other. And then from the clouds, we're going to see Jesus. We're going to get a brand new body, Paul says. It's going to be likened to Jesus. It's not going to be hurt. It's not going to cry. But there's no point in saying, you know, if your mom said, well, what happened to your mom? Well, she's dead. No, she's not. I was in a church one time. I heard of a church. The pastor would not allow you to say that person died if they were a Christian. Because it's wrong. The body's dead, but the soul and the spirit. Your soul could be in hell and your spirit's going back to God. You are a body, soul, and spirit. Even for those that go to hell, their body's coming up in the last judgment, the last resurrection. Their bodies are going to come up, Revelation 20. They're going to stand in their naked body before Jesus Christ and all. And at that point, body and soul gets cast in the lake of fire. We that are saved, those that are saved according to the dispensation that they are in, they will have a body like into angels in heaven. These morons, well, we don't believe in the resurrection. Man, you lost a lot of it. Because if you don't believe in the resurrection today, you can't be saved because that's part of the gospel. There, there are really four things you must believe to be saved. Five. Must. Jesus Christ is God. If you're coming out of the Jehovah Witness movement and you're taught that Jesus is not God, then you're not saved. Jesus Christ was virgin but born. That's essential. You don't believe in the birthday of Jesus. You don't believe in the birthday. I didn't say they believe in the virgin birth. I don't believe in the birthday of Jesus. Especially December 25th. I would say in September, I would say the Feast of Tabernacle. Jesus Christ suffered and died. That's the first part of the gospel. Jesus Christ was buried. That's the second part of the gospel. Jesus Christ arose from the grave three days and three nights. That's the third part. That's what you must believe to be saved. Thus saved the scriptures. So again, the multitude is there. The Herodians already tried with the multitude. Well, if he says pay taxes, ah, they're going to be mad at him. If he says don't pay taxes, 
We got the government. Well, he put them to shame. The, the, the Sadducees, here's a group of people. He knows we don't believe in the resurrection. Let's see how he answers in front of all these people. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. This is something new. The Jews, up to this point, never knew what happened after you died. David will say in the Psalms, is there any rejoicing in the grave? For an Old Testament Jew or even Gentile, no. Your body went in the grave. Your soul went to Abraham's bosom. Your spirit went back to God. A Christian, his body's in the grave somewhere or whatever. Spirit goes back to God. He's absent from the body. He's present with the Lord. You know loved ones going to heaven? They're right now singing with the choir and, and the chorus and the, the cherubims. Do they know what's going on with us? Why would they want to? They're in glory. My wife who died of breast cancer, and I envy her. You say, envy's a sin. Oh, shut up. I wish I was there where she, where she is right now. She's got no more cancer. I've got I've got more pain, sorrows, and all kinds of trouble. I beg God to take me. And it gives you that blessed hope. The internalness of your eternal security up to Matthew 22 when this multitude is listening to it. They had no idea. Go, go, go in the Old Testament Scripture. Look in the law. You won't find. This is what happens to you when you die. Here's a revelation by Jesus to a religious group who doesn't even believe in the resurrection. Can you imagine those, all the people who don't believe in the resurrection, lost? There they are standing at the great white stone judgment. Can you imagine Jesus with that sword? <laughs> they didn't believe in the resurrection, did you? <laughs> How'd you get here? All right, bring on the salt. <laughs> bring on the judgment. You say, why do you say stuff like that? Because Jesus said in the law, <coughs> I throw my truck. When you bring that sacrifice, bring it with salt. <coughs> Don't lack the salt. Do you know what salt does to a wound? If there's two things that my mama ever tried to kill me, and she did, I was a bad boy. Whenever I got injured, mama would pull that red iodine out. And when she gets done with that red iodine on your knee that's been cut open, you have screamed so hard you would turn your body inside out. Another thing Mama would do if you had an open wound, she would, she would draw my water and she'd take this stuff called Epsom salt. Epsom salt for a cut, a wound, an infection is Epsom pain. You ever, did, ever go in the ocean? You swim in there, you, you go, hey, we're right all right. You, you jump in that ocean, you forget. Oh, I forgot all about that. <laughs> you know, Christians say, oh, I'm, I'm going to be the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. How come you never salty? Why are your churches sugarly, diabetic, <clears throat> but you ain't salty? The proper amount of salt <coughs> is good for you. The proper amount of sugar is not good for you. There's no proper amount of sugar. Salt. You get too much salt, you get too, that's not good for you. Too little salt, that's not good for you. So what would Jesus do? He stick that sword in them, the word of God, and then he put the salt. 
and he called them out. You're in error. You're wrong. Have you read the scripture? Have you ever dealt with somebody? And you say, hey, hey, haven't you read the Bible? Read right here. Look, look, look at this verse right here. And you show them. And you make them read it out loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 